Charlemagne goes off on me? <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> Wait, what are y'all talking about? Uh, Charlemagne goes off seemingly on academics. Some of y'all are my sons. <laughs> Okay, wait, what happened? Let me see. All of my sons. Hmm. And I know you upset because daddy's been neglecting you. Yo, it's facts. <laughs> I love all my sons regardless of how, no matter how y'all talk hey, about hey. dad. That's right. Don't mention daddy's no, name no, no. ever again. They can't. No, that, they Sean. can't. They can't. Sean, they can't. They can't. That. They can't. Matter of fact. Because they need to eat. Whenever you hear my sons talking about me. Hey, your sons is hungry. That's right. Yo, your sons are hungry. <laughs> hey, they need Listen, <laughs> next time you hear my sons talk about me, just go in their comments and put daddy's, daddy's not coming home. My sons, some of y'all are my sons. Hmm. And I know you upset because daddy's been neglecting you. <laughs> this is like an amazing attempt for me to crash out in Atlanta. <laughs> I don't know what Charlamagne's talking about. <laughs> he sure ain't talking about me. <laughs> um, yeah, nah, I, I don't know what he's talking about. And um, yeah, I don't take offense to that because I don't think it's aimed towards me. Unless maybe y'all think it's aimed towards me. Look, y'all want a nigga to crash out. Y'all know y'all can't send me. Again, I, I, I've said this many times about Charlamagne. I have tremendous respect for him. Um, you know, I'm a straight shooter. I don't have to do shit in you know, like these weird cryptic ways. Um, also, I'm, you know, I also believe that if me and Charlamagne, well, I don't know, maybe him, maybe the way how he moves, me and Charlamagne not in a relevancy battle. Like, he do his thing, he relevant to whoever he relevant to, I'm relevant to whoever I'm relevant to. I don't think it's like, I'm not going to say your name. I think he would be like, yo, Ak is tripping. Like, if, if he had a problem with me, I think he would just say my name, just like I would say his name. I think the last time I spoke about Charlemagne um, was most most likely on the topic of uh, election stuff, and I mean I still stand on everything I said there. I feel like Charlemagne at first was pushing for a very democratic agenda previously, and was one of the people that shut out Republican candidates that they never really gave an ear to. So ironically, when now Biden looks like he finna die and it looks like the tide is turning and people are rocking with Trump a little bit more, it is actually in his benefit to, you know, if you want to, you know, gain attention and stick out a little bit to switch up his stance. Now, granted, he might just have more information he's learning. Um, but I will say, I do think that there should be some accountability there because, Charles may be one of the most, you know, notable personalities in the game. I do believe that when he, you know, um, the reason why we're in the rut we're in now or the reason why you're now having to say, hey, fuck the Democrats a little bit, even though he's not necessarily saying that, but it's kind of like given that the reason why you got to do that now is because you are the one of the main protagonists in shutting out the other side. Right. You, Angela, Rye, there's a whole little slew of political motherfuckers. They used to bring on the Breakfast Club to make the to make it seem like we're only in a one party land. So when I see you now switching up that 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 thought, all I really want to hear from him is, hey, listen, I was part of the bullshit a little bit. I'm switching it up. I got some new information. That's it. That's not no beef for Charlemagne. That's anybody who that's I said that about Meek. Anybody who been just on some Democrat, Democrat, Democrat shit, and now all of a sudden I'm hearing you saying. Oh nah, I hear you with a bunch of criticism and like, oh no, we might we have to listen to the other side. That wasn't the demeanor of many people then. Other than that, um, let me see what could be, what could be, um, I don't know. I guess maybe because he didn't do the podcast. I don't I don't know why. But again, I'm a straight shooter when it comes to that. And by the way, and, and this is why I know y'all gonna try to gas me. But I've known Charlemagne to be a straight shooter. I promise you. I've told you. I've always told you the story. I knew I always had respect for him because when I first met the motherfucker, they had an intern who was kind of like mad at me because I used to do do a radio show with her at my school. But she was interning for the Breakfast Club when I went up there to interview Charlemagne. And the reason why I respected Charlemagne is that the the chick signed me into iHeart, the the building, brought me in Leaf all the way upstairs. 
And right when we met Charlemagne, she sat there and having small talk with us like nothing was wrong. And right when we met Charlemagne, first thing he says, he says, Ack, what the fuck did you do to her? Because she hates your fucking guts. And I couldn't have more respect for a nigga like that because rather than just just ignore the problem, he confronted her head on, and I respect that. So that's the Charlemagne I know. If me and him had a problem, he's called me multiple of times. You know what I mean? There was, there's many times that he was trying to get us to have issues. And he would call me. I remember one time I, uh, uh, where was I? I think I was in the DR. I'm like, I'm at baggage claim. He, he called me and be like, yo, act. And like, it's always like a laughing comment. He's like, yo, act. Yo, you, you know I'm not dissing you, right? Like, so if if it was something of the sort, I would think it would be very direct either way. Very direct saying, um, I'm dissing you. And I'm pretty sure we'll probably have a conversation about even this. I I haven't heard the full context of it. Somebody said, pick up a stick. And, oh, oh, and, and I guess the other thing, which, by the way, I, like, I'm like i going to be honest with you. It, it's impossible for Charlemagne to feel a way about this. When I went on Flagrant 2, I spoke about, it. like, first of all, we're going to get in some Wendy stuff right after this anyway. Bro, I have tremendous, like, I'm one of the people, I understand where I am and how we got here. The lineage of talk radio gossiping or whatever you want to call as a business as a personality as cultural critic as Charlemagne calls um calls it Wendy's like the fucking goat to me like like me like even with Wendy's situation now you'll never hear me say nothing bad about Wendy Wendy without Wendy I don't think I'm here I don't think Charlemagne's here so when I'm on um flagrant and they bring up Charlemagne versus Wendy it to me it's like Kobe and Mike yeah Charlemagne's Kobe Wendy is Mike, in my opinion. You get what I mean? And, yeah, I, I, I said that opinion, and I still stand by it. You get what I mean? I don't think he would feel offended by that. What the fuck? Why would you feel offended by that? You know what I mean? It, it's like, I don't, I don't know if there's an equivalent for me, but it's like um, may, may, maybe somebody was talking about um, everyday struggle, and they said, oh, no, they love Joe on the shore more than me. Like, what the fuck? Like, who cares? So I, I, I don't necessarily think he's talking about me. Um... But I could see how I could see how people might think it is. The the only thing I think, and I'm about to, again, I'm thinking out loud. The only thing I think that it could be. Let me play one more time. Referring to me. Yo, it's facts. <laughs> <laughs> I love all my sons, regardless of how. No matter how y'all talk hey, about hey. that. That's right. Don't mention daddy's no, name no, no. ever again. They can't. No, that, they Sean. can't. They can't. Sean, they can't. They can't. That. They can't. Matter of fact. Cause they need to eat. Whenever you hear my sons talking about and shows would never diss me like this. Come on, about me. Hey, your sons is hungry. That's right. <laughs> Yo, your sons are hungry. And, and, they need. Listen. <laughs> next time you hear my sons talk about me, just go in their comments and put daddy's, daddy's not coming home. My sons. Some of y'all are my sons, hmm. and I know you upset because daddy's been neglecting you. Yo, hmm. it's Maybe that line, and, and it would only be like, show me never did my podcast. But at this point, it's like, bro, we, we, you know. Remember I vocalized that, yo, okay, what's up with the pod? He put his assistant with my assistant. They never figured out a date or whatever the case is. Or we had a date, then it got moved. Bro, after that, bro, like, I'm not over here, like, obsessing over it, my nigga. You get what I mean? Um, so, fuck if I know. You get what I mean? Somebody said, Andrew's instigate. Now, nah, Andrew's my guy, man. Somebody said, why he ain't drop names? Who do y'all think is Charlemagne's sons? That's a good question. Who do y'all think is Charlemagne's sons? Name Charlemagne's sons. <laughs> Somebody said, Ack, you might be one of the sons. <laughs> Somebody said, Joe Budden? Joe Budden is not Charlemagne's sons. I'm going to be honest with you. Yo, yo, can we find this? Can we, can we find this? This, um, Video in context, please. Let's do that. Let's find the video in context because, again, I think that was a crash out attempt. <clears throat> Let's see. Brilliant idiots. Let's go watch. So we got brilliant idiots. Here we go. Last episode. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Show. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Make that bigger for me, Taylor. Pause. Uh, Pause. Uh, there you go. Got uh, a new body, old pussy. Damn. Why this week? You got a new body, old pussy. Wait, where? Anybody got a timestamp? 
Carlson and Laura Ingram and Carl. Basketball, he can't. Uh, who else? Yeah. That's all, I, I literally first was listening to it just to shit on it because of the hate. Yeah. He's because found the, a way to monetize the hate brilliantly. Now, 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 I will say about Lil Nas X. Oh, no, I could do that. that. Musical fan base that's already going to check. Oh, no. I don't believe you can hate. There's, 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 there's two people, and I'm not on Twitter, so I, I don't ever see it. But people will be like, "Oh, you trending on Twitter." I don't even give a fuck for what. But whenever people do send me stuff from people on Twitter, it is two people. One in particular, I commend you. The reason I commend you, you've been hating me since 2009. So that's the thing. Like, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, wait. Is it? Is, is this? Is this it? You don't hate me, you love me. But that's it. I don't believe <laughs> in that scenario. I don't believe they hate you because no. you cannot hate somebody. Since 2009? Since 2009 and then listen to them for eight hours a week. Yes, and pick apart everything they say. You can't hate. No, no, you love that person. Now you just happen to. So here's the thing. You love that person. Now you just maybe are getting views and clicks from hating on that person. But to me, if you hate somebody, stop listening. Stop listening. Stop watching. Stop listening. Now, if you cannot stop yourself from listening and watching, you love if me. you physically are incapable of <laughs> stopping yourself <laughs> from listening and watching, <laughs> yup, get there. Get there. <laughs> you love them. You want to scream. You want a nut. You want the you fucking want the nut. nut. You don't want to give coming me back that. every week. Every week, man. Every week you every coming back. Every week. Now, or, or... Or maybe you do hate them, but the only way you could get views is with the hate. Skip Bayless LeBron. The only yeah. way that you can rile up the internet. Yeah. And now you might not love him, but you're his prisoner. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. And and, and some of y'all just listen. It just it just discredits their criticism because if you if you didn't love somebody, you would That's stop right. watching. But if you can't stop watching, you love them. That's right. So you cannot tell me you don't love them. Yeah, hey, hey, even now, it's like yo, you can't y'all can't spend every week bashing it, me about something. It doesn't make sense. You love me. You love it's love. You love me. Especially love. some of my sons. Some of y'all are my sons. Hmm. And I know you upset because daddy's been neglecting you. Yo, it's facts. <laughs> you, but, you know what I'm saying? It's love. And it's, it, but don't it's be like that. It's the definition of love. If a dad was at That's every right. single basketball game, every right. single basketball game a dad showed up, would you believe that dad didn't love his kid? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm just saying, if it wait, wait, listen. My dad was at every basketball game. Everybody's like, yo, he loves him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. loves him. Yeah. If a dad is at every single game, that's, that's right. love. You that's love. Right. That's right. That's right. I it's love, commitment. I love all my sons regardless of how, no matter how y'all talk hey, about hey, daddy. Hey, Charlotte, Charlotte. <laughs> they love you too. I know they do. Yo, they could prove they Yo. don't, hey, watch it. They could prove they don't love you by never saying anything Stop. again. Exactly. But wait, wait, wait a minute. Exactly. <laughs> Will they? That's right. Don't mention daddy's <laughs> no, name no, no. ever again. They can't do No, that, they Charlotte. can't. They can't. Charlotte, they can't. They can't. That. They can't. Matter of fact, because they need to eat. Whenever you hear my sons talking about me. Hey, your sons is hungry. That's right. Yo, your sons are hungry. <laughs> and, and, they need to eat. And that's right. And I would never tell you eat a dick. You know what I'm saying? I will always be here. <laughs> Listen, next time you hear my sons talk about me, just go in their comments and put daddy's, daddy's not coming home. Daddy's, <laughs> daddy's never coming home. <laughs> but you know what? Yo, but your sons love you so much, they're going to find you. Yeah. That's right. They won't accept no, no, that daddy's no. not coming Se home. They're going to find you. Put daddy's coming home soon. Daddy, <laughs> daddy will be home soon. <laughs> daddy's coming home daddy soon. Daddy will be home Relax, soon. Relax, man. It's okay. That's the thing. That's why I don't, I don't believe any of this shit. If you listen every week and you got the same <laughs> criticism every single week, I think you like it. Especially You those, like those but, things. That's right. Because you're coming back. Think about it. And also, too. If a girl says she ain't like your dick and she kept calling you every <laughs> single week, what would you say? Would you believe her or not? A girl goes on Twitter, yo, his dick is trash, calls you every, every single weekend. Every single day. Every, every weekend you coming over. Gets to get her the shit blown open. Well, and then okay. the next week, yeah, his dick is trash, calls again. But dick is trash, he, calls again. He might just love him. Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> That's the thing. Oil up <laughs> no, no, she just said it. She just said it. She just said it. She might just love him. Exactly. Taylor yeah. don't even know what she said just now. I know. No. She just made no. the point. I, I, yeah, yeah, she loved that I Taylor. Know. That's exactly. I'm just, I don't think he's talking about Joe either. He said some Twitter guys. I don't think Joe is Charlemagne's son at all.
saying, if you don't like somebody, you if you truly didn't like anybody, you just wouldn't watch. If you truly don't, you just like, wouldn't listen. You, now, wait, hold on. Truly don't. But like, you can't not watch or listen. If you that's love, bro. Get off my dick. That's love. Hey, bro. <laughs> can't. Hey, you know why? Hey, why? Because it's good. It's good. <laughs> that like dick good. Riding this dick. Ooh! Hey, yo, 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 yo. Right now they're like, should should, should we make a video? Hey, should no, we respond? Funny. They're thinking about. It. No, no. <laughs> they're I like, my mouth. If I respond, I'm admitting I'm riding the dick. You made that noise. <laughs> I'll wait a week. You made that noise. I open my mouth and look like I did. <laughs> like do it again. Watch, watch, watch. Wait, I, what noise did I make? You screamed. Oh, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the logic don't add up, bro. It don't, don't add up, man. You fucking love us. Let's pay some bills. Okay. Um, interestingly, ironically enough, I think it, it, for, for the people at No Jumper, I look at this conversation as much more nuanced as y'all when y'all like, yo, hey, he's just dissing act. No, th this is a conversation that if, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing about, maybe not Charlemagne. I think Char Charlemagne is a legend um, in his own right, but he's not a, he's not an internet guy. Schultz is a huge internet guy. Trust me. They're both responding to multiple things. And if, you know, if y'all are in tune, like, you know, I'm in tune. <laughs> You would realize what they were responding to. Recently, and I could tell, recently, Andrew Schultz, who's now like Wally, Andrew Schultz responded to some shit too. Charlemagne's responding to some shit. They're having synergy on talking about people critiquing them. Andrew Schultz, which by the way, I can't wait to do flagrant again because I don't think he's acknowledged this. Every week, there's like five inst inst YouTube pages that keep talking about Andrew Schultz is like the, the, the decline of Andrew Schultz. I be watching him and be like, these people clearly love the podcast, but they only point out bad things about him, or they point out things that they clearly they, they claim they don't like. Here we go. Um, what, 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 what type in? And Andrew shows fall of Andrew shows. You type something. Yeah, look like this. This mad look, look. look. And it's really like four channels that does it. This one guy does it a lot. Retroactive. I don't know. I don't know who this is. But if you look at his page, th that's how they get they quam, their qualms. Like, that's how they kind of turn up. They make videos basically saying that successful people that they have supported have now changed and they have now done unthinkable things and now they're going into their decline. I mean, shit, I've seen videos recently. They're like the decline and the downfall of academics. That is now like a new meta of commentary channels like for example and I think, i've seen it happen. And, and honestly i think that's what Schultz has responded i'll get to what i believe charlamagne's responding to in a bit but this is what Schultz is responding to i think podcasts in the world it changes from what it once was and fans begin to comment and by the way here's the thing it, it, it's interesting and i think this is why Schultz is responding like that bro he's basically saying you're not a fucking hater you love the podcast like you're a fucking fan you're talking about how bad we are and how we've now regressed to our lowest levels, but we're doing the best we've ever done, and you keep up with every fucking thing we do. If I fucking sneeze wrong or laugh too much at a joke, you're going to cover it. You're going to do a video on it, saying that I'm fake laughing, but you're saying that the like my career and you're saying that my videos are in decline or, or like my podcast in decline, which clearly isn't the case by numbers or any other metric roves with every complaint under the sun. But as we saw in the opening clip, nobody fits more accurately to what Whitney and Bill said about YouTube comedians than Schultz, with a lot more subscribers than most of his peers and quite the attitude shift from four years ago before he blew up. Much of their audience was gained with Schultz's crowd work ability going viral part, however. Oopsie. The podcast. Tons of comments from fans complaining where older episodes... Yeah, which by the way, again, you know, uh, like I've seen people... Like they make trying to make a big deal of they're like yo yo, cause I was trying to tell a story on on flagrant. They were like yo act like you got cut off mad times. It's flagrant when you walk in a flagrant, right? I walk in a flagrant to get attacked on all sides. Pause. Come with your jokes. They're gonna have jokes at you. Your outfit, your career, saucy Santana. If that's in the news. Anything they're going to joke at you at. You better have some jokes to come come back with. And I'm going to be honest with you, in a great conversation, 
they're going to get some meaningful shit in like sometimes we talk about the state of the music industry shit we talk about some real shit in there but it's a comedic comedian filled podcast you have akash amazing comedian you have uh, uh um andrew a fucking amazing comedian you have mark another comedian and even motherfucking um uh, 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 uh my man alex he got jokes too so again you come in there super tight or just like whatever whatever so again yeah i was trying to tell the story but it's not a big deal and i think this is what shows is saying yo we've gotten so big to the point y'all keep nitpicking every small thing we do this is what we normally see from a lot of reddits that's why i keep telling you there's a, a the, there is the inevitable cycle of what happens to all reddits why does a Reddit exist? Usually to say where we are supporting this creator, this podcast, this entity, this company, whatever the case is. And then after, like, for example, all of these Reddits, the only time they're jumping is when there's drama and when people are predicting shit's going to fall. If everything is popping, then nobody want to talk about nothing. I popped into a Reddit. Shit was going good. Niggas like, this shit boring. Shit going bad. It's lit. <laughs> So sometimes what happens, and I think this is what Schultz is talking about, but it's extended to YouTube channels, right? Like what these YouTube channels are doing, they're just vocalizing what Reddits are saying. You go to the, look, I, I'm being a flagrant to Reddit, flagrant to Reddit. Everybody, like, motherfucker, this is a successful podcast. Look, Shane Gillis and Andrew Schultz rivalry explained. My nigga, they probably don't have a rivalry at all. They're friends. Right? Like, why would Schultz keep inviting a nigga who he doesn't like or whatever? But the internet's created some beef. Oh, based on one awkward moment, Schultz made fun of, like, a guy or somebody who was, like, had Down syndrome and he got family with Down syndrome. So he was, quote, unquote, trying to check Schultz. And people like, oh, they don't fuck with each other. Now they're comparing patrons and uh, Patreon numbers, right? Like, look, like, you know what I mean? Like, what happens, you'll start to see it turns into like a hate thing. Like, let me, let me just keep going. Uh, my thoughts on the pod, whatever, whatever. This is worse than Taylor Swift dick riding. It, it's mostly like, I can keep saying this. Any Reddit will look at a Picasso and say, what the fuck is that smudge right there? They never say, yo, this, this guy is great. These people are great. And sometimes it's mostly contrarians who don't want to seem like an echo box. So they look on YouTube and they say, people are saying this guy's already good. They're saying he's great. So let me find the things that are inconsistent. You know what I mean? Every Reddit try to like prove the creator they're following is a hypocrite, is a liar, is hiding some secret, won't talk about something they want to talk about. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just like fans who have now created an alternate universe and it sometimes it borders on insanity. I'm going to just be honest with you. This is why I tell every creator, when you don't go to your own Reddit. Like, my, like from, from what I heard, there's two Reddits that, that, that supposedly is dedicated to me. I can't look in there. You know why? Because there's never nothing constructive. All they talk about is bullshit. <laughs> you get what I mean? If you want constructive shit, they're never going to tell you. Be like, hey, I have a good idea for you. Nope. You know what they're going to talk about? Fights, beef, dramas, makeup lies. No, I'm telling you, these are like fans that they come across as haters, but in reality, they're giant fans, but it's almost like they need the recognition, if you ask me. Uh, it happens to the Flagrant 2 Reddit. Let's go to Joe Button Reddit. Um, oh, you know what Reddit I go to a lot? I go to this Reddit. Length of girth. All they do is motherfucking hate on Fresh. <laughs> what the fuck? All they, what the hell? All they do is hate on Fresh. Myron got a relationship. All they do is hate on that shit. Not one person is like happy in that bitch. Everybody's disgruntled. A Reddit, like, and that's what I'm saying. These, these, these channels that's now popping up, like, like these little talk channels, they're just vocalizing, like, they're just capitalizing off Reddit culture, right? Um, I don't know if Destiny's Reddit is like that. Uh, but no jumpers Reddit. That's, I keep telling y'all, you know why no jumper got, got fucked up? You got the hosts who are attention starved. Like, I had to tell, I told everybody on my team, if you ask me about one thing you've seen in the Reddit, nigga, it's almost at a point, I tell niggas, you fire, nigga. <laughs> like, get the fuck on out of here. If you're over here having a E relationship with me when you see me in person, that is weird to me. You get what I mean? No jumper got fucked up because the attention starved host used to go home and check the Reddit. Here's the thing. The Reddit is like 200 people that are fucking super stands that have never gotten any type of like hug from their daddy, which is a creator, and they just start making up wild rumors and just try to start type of beefs and wars. You gotta just ignore them. 
uh, Joe Budden's ready was just like that. You, 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 you know how I got all. You know everybody was like, yo, no. Jo I think I told people this too. They'd be like, no, Joe must have leaked all the information. Like, I went to Joe Bunn's Reddit, and they gave me the whole game plan how to destroy the shit. They said, if you want Ruri and Mealy Maul to leave, this nigga think he's a boss. Call him a worker. Okay, I did it. That nigga flipped the fuck out. <laughs> Showed up to my crib. Like, that nigga was losing it. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is effective. <laughs> all I did was I'll get on here and scroll. <laughs> okay, let's see what this nigga insecurity is. What? Okay, I'm going to hold that. <laughs> What? I'm going to hold that. What? I'm going to hold that. And Joe knows because Joe's not on this bullshit. No fuck. I'm telling you, man. And, and by the way, no, no, again, I'm not necessarily dissing these people that are on these Reddits and whatever the case is. But when you ask me about this, uh, I know what Schultz is talking about. There's, yo, there's mad videos. I'm telling you. Look. Look. Let, let's go back to YouTube. There's mad videos talking about how Schultz, they're acting like he's now a failure. The nigga just sold out Madison Square Garden. Nobody is in his Reddit saying, oh, my God, good job. No YouTube channel is saying, oh, my God, he's doing some crazy shit and he's winning. You know what everybody's saying? Yo, he's changed. He got exposed. Everybody knows his. He don't re, He's not really funny. His whole style is being a dick. Like, bro, are you fucking stupid? Like, you think Andrew Schultz just got here? <laughs> look, the fall off, the downfall. Like, look at this shit. The sad downfall. Look, look, another channel. Comedy Enforcement, the sad downfall of Flagrant 2. If this what downfall looks like, pussy, sign me the fuck up, okay? Look, flagrant two. When you pull up motherfucking flagrant two, everything they drop I know is all getting about like you. goddamn a million. Like these niggas been top, like this is a top podcast. They're doing amazing fucking numbers, right? But of course, if you listen to other people, they're a fucking failure, okay? Um, let me see. Where did my episode go? I forgot where that bitch is. Did my shit hit a million yet or no? Oh, man, we ain't hit a million yet. Man, y'all let me down. We're at 898. We won't get there. We won't get there. Action Bronson did a million. Like, yeah, pretty much they average high numbers, bro. Like, this shit is lit. I'm sorry. And, and by the way, and here's the thing, too, because I'll I be like, I'll be reading some of these niggas with these parasocial relationships with these guys. They're like, no, man, I remember when Andrew Schultz, I remember when he just came on the scene and he was doing flagrant when he had the other black guy on there and he used to be like this. He never used to laugh that long at jokes. He used to be like this. He He's now changed. He's turned into a dick. He cuts off a kosh all the time. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh why, why, why so many guests? Oh, oh, my. Shut up, nigga. Keep watching. Like, you're, these niggas is hate watching. Fuck out of here. So, anyway. My my suggestion to all creators, ignore YouTubers that make videos like this. And, and I'm not saying you should disrespect them, but you got to ignore them because they're, they're just like, it's still going to help support. It's like not, nobody's going to stop watching Flagrant, right? It's just going to keep going. Um, now, what Charlamagne is talking about, let's go to what Charlamagne is talking about. Okay, so we get what Schultz is talking about. He's talking about the hate watchers. He's talking about... These people with parasocial relationships that, you know what I mean, feel like they know him. Oh, my God, ever since Andrew Schultz, Andrew Schultz got a kid and got, like, this new girl, like, oh, my God, he doesn't do this anymore. And, oh, my God, like, I used to watch him back then, but I stopped. You stop watching him, but you're watching a video that hates him? Fuck out of here. You feel me? <laughs> like, get out of here, man. Um. Okay. Now, what Charlamagne's talking about, that's interesting. I don't know what's going on in the world of Charlemagne that much. I'm going to be very honest. In the world of Charlemagne, Jess Hilarious just got put on The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club is still going, still thriving and kicking. But I do believe he's going into this political realm. I think we're going to see if this is successful. But I believe that Charlemagne... He, he tried to do two pivots, and I'm not saying, I'm just telling you how I've watched his career because I study him. And, and, and so you got to study, you know, people who come before you if you ever want to get to certain places. He made the mental health struggle. Bro, I think that's, I'm not saying his pivot to that's a dub. Niggas don't like, we don't give a fuck about no mental health shit, man. Fuck all that shit, man. Like, come on, man. Bullying ain't getting out of here. I thought he should have stayed on his shit. But I understand he had a lot of things going on. And they were at one point trying to put a noose around his neck and hang him like he was the guy who was mentally abusing people and trying to use his past and, try, and 
almost doing cancel culture in a way for him and trying to like say this is a bad guy and he he sidestepped it and was like you know what mental health brother you know what i mean i get that i do think the next route is politics and as we go into this political season we always need a savvy entertaining comedic black male to be the leader and voice of black people we're kind of like a monolith when it comes to voting when it comes to political choice because listen the people who like for example like say wayne when he says that yo he like a republican or whatever we say he's weird right or we're like oh you're you, oh that mean you're a sellout because you you don't you're not with the causes we're with a lot of times social causes and social justice is tied to politics and usually policies that a lot of these people are, are enacting. So we're, we're, black people are more like a monolith. Anyway, election season's coming. They need a black guy to be the voice of that. I think Charlemagne is is kind of inching up in that particular thing. Here's the thing. There's other black dudes that do that. We don't listen to them, right? Like nobody wants to hear, what's that fucking lame ass nigga? Mark, Mark Lamont Hill? Like that nigga's fucking lame. Like we don't want to... We don't want to listen to that nigga for shit. He don't got fired from every fucking show. This thing is a fucking lame, right? We're tired of Michael Eric Dyson. We want, like, somebody who could at least talk our language. And I think that's where Charlemagne comes in the mix. Now, I think Charlemagne's smarter than the average fucking bear. He realized that all this, you know, no, no, like, uh, I'm not calling it tap dancing necessarily, but, like, all of this, like, Democrats, 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 that shit work last time this time around you got to start square dancing in the realm of being open to the possibility and probably the most likely possibility that trump finna wash this nigga in an election so again and here's the thing when you step out and say hey i'm down to hear from the other side if you could convince the community to, to listen to you with that the power you gain is almost unlimited and i think that's what he's, he's doing by the way you know he's doing a daily show as well um uh, I think that's going to be interesting. I think Charlemagne has a, and by the way, I'm speaking, it's not no hater shit, bro. I'm just speaking like a regular fucking fan and human. The only thing I always said about with Charlemagne when it came to politics is that Charlemagne could speak as a regular human, right? Like, yo, this, I'm just a regular voting person. The problem is when, you know, like say for example, the Daily Show with Jon Stewart, a lot of times regular people like to hear politics from who they think is smart. Charlemagne doesn't fit that bill. Why? Because he, he's been cosplaying. He's not a dumb nigga at all. But he's been cosplaying as the guy who's not that intellectual on The Breakfast Club. How many times have you heard him on The Breakfast Club saying what that word mean? Like, come on. Like, he's, ne he's always playing like, I'm not that smart. Right? So, I'm telling you, niggas don't like hearing politics from somebody they don't think is smarter than them. That's why when people could eloquently put things together, you automatically think, especially when they're speaking about politics and policies and all these other things, you think they're speaking the truth, right? So I, that's the thing I think people, you know, his edge is being funny, but I don't think when, when you're dealing with politics, people want to feel like they're getting put on game. I don't think people are listening to Charlemagne thinking they're putting him on game, right? So they're thinking, okay, and this is maybe the only other angle is like, yo, he's saying the shit that we all want to say. But I think this is what distinguishes, not, say, not saying he's trying to be like Jon Stewart at all, but this is why I listen to Jon Stewart and I'm like, I feel like Jon Stewart is smarter than all the politician and he's funnier than everybody. I think with Charlamagne, I don't think they, they I think that's a, uh, uh, he got to get over that hill and that's might be a rebranding, re but it kind of, it, it kind of coincides or kind of, you know, conflicts with, the character, or let me not say character because I don't think he's playing a character on The Breakfast Club, but when people, when you have portrayed yourself to be not that intellectual, people at a point are going to be like, bro, this is above, like, it's like Cardi B. With all due respect, Cardi B, shake your ass. We want to hear them songs from you. But if Cardi B start breaking down politics, other than her giving us a couple jokes or not, we're not listening to Cardi B unless you're a fucking idiot. Like, are you listening to Cardi B for who you should vote for? No. <laughs> you get what I mean? Like, I listen, and again, Obviously, she's on the other side of the aisle, but you see, Candace Owens breaking down politics. At least I could listen to it and think about shit. You know what I mean? Even, even like you know what I mean? Shit, I rather even even Mark Lamont Hill. If he was born as painted, he's a bitch ass nigga. But I think that's where Charlemagne's at right now. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I I, I think his cri critics are going to be people 
who are critiquing his new moves or, you know, I guess maybe that could end up being me where um, I critiqued like his new uh, seemingly maybe new position with with the whole, you know, criticizing Democrats type of thing. Right. Um, even though, by the way, I think he had a great quote recently. Uh, let me see if I can play it. Sure. Uh, he had a great quote recently. I kid you not. Oh, no, no, I got to go to his Instagram. He had a great quote. Ooh, he's spamming. Somebody said, play Vivek cooking Charlemagne? When? Um, he was on something, and he, like, he, said, he said something smart. And I was like, okay, that's like a good catch line right there. No, that's not it. Fuck. Mm, maybe this is it? Oh, here we go. And then suburban voter who I feels that. It. Uh, I don't know. Um... Somebody said Vivek cooking, <laughs> cooking, you know, cooking. Vivek Charlemagne. Okay, is there a clip? If it's not a clip, well, I ain't about to play this whole thing. Where's the back and forth with the uh, this guy and Charlemagne? I think this was the interview, though. We're now going to bring you someone who has never been a guest on this week or on any other side. Between, you know, Biden and Trump. And that's what makes me feel like the couch is going to win. Why? This is the first time in my life when people say things like, you know, uh, this person is a threat to democracy. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. And it's mind boggling to me that, you know, nobody is taking it as serious as I feel like they should. Like we watched an attempted coup of this country happen on January 6th. And everybody's acting like it was just a bunch of people, you know, wilding at, at spring break, you know, down in Florida. Yeah. Like we literally watched, you know, just people try to th overthrow the government because they didn't like the results of an election led by a, a, a former, you know, president. If that doesn't cause a sense of urgency in people, I don't know what will. But, I mean, Biden does make that an issue over and over again. I mean, he constantly talks about that. Why is it not resonating? Well, he's, he's just. All right, man. I, I, I don't want to. Um, OK. Yeah, uh, I, I can't be be bothered to find the actual part. It was a and, but I don't think it's too late for her to pivot. You know, I think that right now, you know, historically, vice presidents had problems. We the case against Donald Trump in this <laughs> because I feel like you should be able to criticize oh, here we go. from the White House because you even now in this conversation you're very tough on Biden. So when you when you say something critical, do you hear from him? Yeah, and I think that's the stupid ever because yeah. I think that oh, oh I'm sorry, but, but we can I, leave that yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like you should be able to criticize whoever. You can't keep saying that there's a, a threat to democracy and democracy as we know it is going to be, be be gone, but not act like it. And and the other problem is they've always done this with every single Republican candidate since I've been alive. Whoever the Republican yeah, I, I think th this was like the smartest shit I heard him say, which was good. Presidential candidate has been they've demonized. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if it's John McCain. It doesn't matter if it was, you know, Mitt Romney. It doesn't matter who it is. They right. will they will demonize the Republican candidate, and that is just an actual legitimate threat right there in our faces. I think this is they're it. like the, they're like the party who cried wolf. Nobody believes. Them. Do you think Trump's gonna win? I, I don't know, but that's what's scary about it, right? Because when you look at everything he's done, mm -hmm. right, the attempted coup of this country, put the Supreme Court judges on. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, I I'm going to I'm going to take it that Charlemagne was not talking about me. Charlemagne's a straight shooter. Uh, if he was talking about me, he would just say, act. I heard you say this and you're wrong. Like, let me tell you how you're wrong. Um, that's how I would take it. All right. Now, granted, I haven't speak. Uh, me and him, we usually speak more frequently than we probably have over the last couple months. Uh, if you ask me, just honestly, I, I think, you know, him signing that hater, um, that bum ass nigga, um, probably has driven a wedge maybe in between like, you know, a possible relationship with us, um, or at least, you know, may have made us talk a little bit less and, um, I don't know, you know, it is what it is, but, but, but for, for clarity, you know, I'm. I think I've done everything possible to ask or request doing content with Charlemagne. I'm I'm no longer like like fucking like oh my god Charlemagne please do some shit like it, it's either he wants to do it or not. If he doesn't want to do it, fucking it's not gonna happen. You know what I mean? It's not on me at this point, and you know it's shit. You know what I mean? 
I, at this point, I could just look at it like, hey, uh, and and somebody, I think a lot of people have said it. We're both in the league at this point, my nigga. Like, at the end of the day, no matter how much I look up to him, my nigga, at some point, Iris had to cross over Mike. You, you get me? Like, you got to play against the nigga who, who you look up to and you think is Hall of Fame. It, it is what it is. So, you can't cry about um, spill milk. All right. Spill milk. Pause. All right. Uh yeah, shout out to Andrew Schultz though, and shout out to Charlemagne, bring idiots. Still love that podcast. All right, uh, 